Yar har har, it's time for me to talk about the second best Pirates movie, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. This is by virtue of its competitors being really bad, but there is a lot to like here. I love giving Jack an equal in the form of a past lover he wronged. It was getting old having every character connected to Jack's past, but I like the idea of one person being able to match his cunning. And Ian McShane tears it up in almost every movie he's in, so even though he doesn't have a lot to work with, I enjoy him here. I'm glad the movie isn't beating the same jokes into the ground. Why is the rum gone? Any mention of escape via sea turtles? They do one Captain Jack Sparrow reference, but since that's the only one, I'll let it slide. This movie tries to do its own thing, so pass or fail, at least it's trying. While the previous movies did a good job incorporating the supernatural into the story, this one, the zombies and the mermaids feel tacked on. Where did Blackbeard get the ability to control his ship with his sword? Where did he get zombies? Who designed the Fountain of Youth so it only works if you have a mermaid tier? I'm not looking for super deep detailed world building, but some details would be nice. This movie could have been improved. Let's get into it. As per my version of At World's End, Jack and Gibbs still have the pearl. The crew just spent some treasure. Now they're broke and looking to Jack for what to do next. Jack hears an old friend of his died recently. Even in this line of work, this takes Jack aback. Our heroes broke the afterlife to get Jack back, but with a new ferryman, things are back to normal, so dead is dead. We won't linger on Jack's friend dying, but we need something to make Jack ponder the finality of things when the Fountain of Youth is brought up. Jack felt like a passenger in his own story in this movie. That's fine if you're doing an anthology series rotating different protagonists in and out, but that isn't what this series was doing by this point. They were committed to Jack as the main guy, so he needs to actually be the main guy. A passive protagonist is a boring protagonist. Even when Jack was doing despicable stuff in previous movies, he was at least getting it done. Here, he's kidnapped and forced to work with Blackbeard and Angelica for most of the movie, not giving many glimpses of Jack's ability to persevere in the face of impossible odds. That's symptomatic of giving Jack an equal who can match his skills, and that's fine, but there should be more of an even win-lose ratio. Sometimes Jack wins, sometimes Angelica does. We'll keep Barbosa as a privateer hunting down pirates. Since Barbosa didn't have the pearl at the end of my fix of three, he didn't lose it to Blackbeard in between three and four, nor did he lose his leg. I'm confused why Blackbeard even has a fleet of shrunken ships. Do they help him find the Fountain of Youth? I wanted to give Barbosa redemption after he tasted the afterlife and found it not to his liking, so he offered his services to the king. This might make him unlikable, but our main characters are outlaws and the only thing that makes them heroes is their conflict with worse outlaws. They don't rape and murder, but they're still thieves, and the movie wanting you to root for them is weird. Making Barbosa an antagonist but not evil would be cool, and it might force our heroes to look at what they're doing. They won't look too hard. After all, can't make movies if your greedy pirates have a change of heart. The movie thrusts Jack into the story because Angelica impersonated him to recruit people to find the Fountain of Youth. From a writing perspective, I get this. Jack is curious who's using his name, but in story, I have no idea why Angelica does this. He's the only pirate she could pass as, which isn't much of an explanation. You could say she did this to draw Jack out so they could get the map, but there's a thousand ways this could go wrong. What if Jack couldn't escape from the British when they captured him? What if he pawned this important item off for drinking money? What if someone stole the map, making him useless in his own movie? Oh, that actually happened. Jack's crew will race against Angelica to get to the fountain first. This allows more opportunities for Jack and Angelica to outwit each other without neutering Jack. Jack can't deny being killed has changed him, and if he can find a way to avoid going back to that torment, he will. But the second movie was about the days of piracy as these characters know them coming to a close, and our characters need to change with the times or get out of the way. Jack isn't ready to face the uncertainty of the future, so while he's scared of death, he's even more scared of eternal life. Once used, the fountain has to recharge, putting some urgency in the plot. In addition to Jack not wanting to wait 30 years to get eternal life, when he finds out Angelica is traveling with Blackbeard, getting to the fountain becomes even more urgent, because an immortal Blackbeard is bad news. Blackbeard died in 1718. This movie does pull a, I thought you were dead, but like most of the supernatural stuff, it doesn't explain anything. I'd say Blackbeard managed to come back to life thanks to breaking the barrier to the underworld in the third movie. Blackbeard's motivations are the same as Jack's. He's tasted hell, he doesn't want to go back. I like Jack being terrified when he hears Angelica is working with Blackbeard. Blackbeard relied on his fearsome reputation to get the job done, which is a cool idea, except Jack has faced skeleton men, fish 
Man, Krakens, and Hell itself. So it would be impossible to contrive a way for Jack to be afraid of Blackbeard unless you give him a supernatural advantage. You could say young Jack had a run-in with Blackbeard and nearly died, and is scared at the mention of his name, but that's another character you're connecting to Jack's past. You almost don't need Blackbeard, as his presence overshadows Angelica, but you want someone unrepentantly evil seeking the fountain, and I like Angelica having a moral code she follows because she's a mirror to Jack. We have more of the Captain Jack Sparrowing of the entire cast. Angelica betrays Jack, has plans to betray Blackbeard, Jack tries to betray Angelica, Jack tries to betray Blackbeard with Angelica, later Blackbeard tries to kill Angelica, then Jack joins Barbosa. Barbosa betrays King and Country, Jack tricks Blackbeard into betraying Angelica. Some of this is to be expected, but at least have a clear plot laid out before you do this. Have a plot, period. It's an hour into the movie, and we still don't have any of the items needed to turn on the Fountain of Youth. I would be okay with some double crosses if there was some forward momentum in this movie. Why do we have a new Will in Elizabeth? I guess I get that we need a mermaid's tear to access the fountain, so that explains Morgan Le Fay here, but what purpose does the preacher serve? He doesn't show up until half an hour into the movie. These two don't meet until halfway into the movie. Then we get a couple of scenes of them giving each other bedroom eyes before we find out her name. Then in the middle of the finale, they run off and I'm not sure if the guy dies since he looks fatally wounded and she drags him underwater. Will and Elizabeth's romance worked because they were front and center in the first movie. We find out more about both of them than we do Jack. Will was the Luke Skywalker to Jack's Han Solo. If you're going to do this star cross lovers thing, it needs more room to breathe. <laughs> no pun intended. These two should have had more screen time in this movie or be in a second movie to give this romance more room to develop. If you think we need the sappy love story, I don't think we do. Any romance you think you need, you can tease with Jack and Elizabeth, but we don't need any of this. This didn't have to be a complicated story. Take out the Spanish Armada, who's only in the movie for five minutes. Take out the betrayals and the boring love story. This needed to be a fast-paced race to the fountain. Blackbeard threatens Angelica if Jack doesn't hand over the stuff they have. Jack tricks Blackbeard into getting sucked into the fountain. Angelica is mad at Jack for killing her father. Barbosa pulls a Norrington and allows Jack to get away while still remaining his nemesis. They almost had a good movie. What do you guys think? I hope you like this one because uh, I've got one more Pirates movie to do, so come back next week for that. Until then, have a great rest of the day.